to Real Talk with Diane. You know, as you watch here, I just want to share with you some stuff. In life, we have challenges. Stuff happens, people of God. And many of God's people wonder about their life. They wonder, why is God allowing this to happen to me? They wonder, where is the abundant life? that God has for me. I read about it, but it's not happening. And you see, people, we forget that there is a thief. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus' promises are yes and amen. He says, I come to give you life, and life more abundantly. Over 30 years ago, I was at rock bottom. But today, I am living a victorious and complete life. Yes. It's complete in him. I can't do this on my own. I have to lean on him, depend on him, and walk out this victorious life. The truth of the matter is, people, I struggled with my real identity. I had lost it, and I wondered, why was I born in this time? Why was I struggling with so many things? See, I had struggled with rejection. I had struggled with feeling that nobody loved me. And so it opened the door to the enemy. And today we want to talk about this. Why doors are open in our lives, giving the enemy legal rights, even though we are born again. That's what we've come to talk up to you today in Real Talk with Diane. Joining me today on Real Talk is Sandra Falkenstein of Higher Life Ministries and Edna Riley of his original design. I want us to just welcome Sandra and Edna. And I want to just say thank you for being with me here today. Edna and Sandra, let me share you, with you a little bit of what happened to me in the first 12 years of my marriage. It was really rough, a rough time. But the Lord restored my marriage after 12 years. and. After that, he put the pieces back together, little by little. And out of it, I wrote a book. And the book is called The Victorious and Complete Life, or The Victorious and Complete Woman. And there's a bit of it that I want to read to you because I would love us to address it today. In the first chapter I wrote, the chapter was called Feeling Insecure and Unloved. And this is what I wrote in one of the paragraphs. Satan wasted absolutely no time getting to me. He was waiting for me like a lion crouching at the door. I opened the door and let him in, for I was in rebellion. I opened the door and in walked unworthiness, loneliness, insecurity, rejection, unforgiveness, resentment, depression, and the spirit of suicide. They all did not hit me at the same time, but they lurked nearby waiting for their moment to come. Today on this set, we're going to talk about some of these doors that get open in our lives. In Genesis, God said to Cain, what's wrong with you? Your countenance has changed. Be careful, for sin lieth at the door. That's the first place in the Bible that we read about a door being open. And so today, Sandra, can you talk to us about the significance of doors in our lives? Well, you've done a very good job describing, even in your own life, how these things come in, came into your life. And you mentioned that you, know, you were in rebellion, mm -hmm. and that is a huge door. When any time that we live outside of God's will and God's purpose, and even in just awareness of accountability to a God. Mm -hmm. And of course, we serve the Most High God, right. Jehovah God. Um, Any time that we're separate from Him, our life becomes an open door for the enemy to come and to steal. Because life has its origin in God Himself. He is the one who has purpose for us to be here. He's the one that has created us. Even while we were yet in our mother's womb, mm -hmm. the scripture tells us, God knows us. Yes. So when we choose to live life by our own means and not aware of God and, and our responsibility to Him and His responsibility to us, 
that right there is an open door. So anytime man lives in rebellion against God and the existence of God, it's an open door for the enemy to steal. And then it creates a, a land of desolation, really. Mm. Um, and so it doesn't it doesn't abide, it doesn't abound. It it's desolate. So we have to be aware that the enemy of our soul does roam around looking for those that he wants to devour. It's not just a matter of making life uncomfortable. He's out to devour our lives. So we do have to be aware of the fact that God is our preservative. Yes. And our life in God is a preservative for the enemy, against the enemy, who would come to devour, to steal from us, and to make life very miserable. Yes, and then you want to jump in. Go ahead. <laughs> and while um, rebellion is an open door, there are many ways that rebellion comes into our life. Mm. So it can be a reaction to someone trying to control us. It can be a reaction to feeling unloved and abandoned, even perhaps not physical abandonment, but even emotional abandonment. Anytime we feel unloved, our reaction is going to be either feelings of rejection or rebellion because we're trying to find ways to get that love that we're missing. Yes, and, and that's the truth because I, I felt like I was unloved. My husband didn't tell me he didn't love me. Just some stuff that was going on made me feel he didn't love me and so I began to rebel and then I felt like some outside influence was controlling me so that's you touched mm -hmm. on something there yes and so we rebel and then we then the rejection starts to trip in and so now I know that there is this vicious stronghold of control rebellion and rejection I would love us to talk about that because I, sh I feel that there are people outside listening to us right now that they are controlled by whether husband, parents, somebody is controlling them and then they walk out rebelling against this control and then there's a cycle of re the rejection, mm -hmm. the control, the rebellion. Who wants to jump in with this? I'd just like to, to talk for a moment about the control because it comes in in many different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people think control is just manipulation but control can come from someone who worries too much and they draw, continually draw from us um, a desire to help. And pretty soon we begin to not feel free mm -hmm. to walk in fullness because we're feeling that need. It leads to a codependence really. Yes, yes. That's interesting. And the rebellion and the rejection is a too typical response to control. And sometimes it's really obvious, mm -hmm. like you can look at somebody and say, well, they really are rejected or they really are in rebellion because it's an obvious thing. But a lot of times it's very passive. It's not an outward, I mean, there is an outward expression, but it doesn't have to be so overt that someone would really just draw back from them. It's not, It's an inner posturing of the heart mm. when it comes to that rejection or that rebellion because we've all sort of learned to obey out of fear of punishment. Yes. But just because we obey doesn't mean we're submitted. And so when it comes to the subtle rebellion, you can have someone on the outside that looks like they are the ideal child because they never do anything wrong, and they may not. But inwardly, mm -hmm. they could be seething in rebellion because they don't have a sense of freedom because of the control that they're subject to. So there's an active rejection and rebellion, and there's a passive rejection and rebellion. And of course, the active is always very obvious, but the passive, not so much. That's why we need to examine our hearts yes. to see if there's any wicked way. And I used to think, I don't, I'm not a wicked person. I'm okay, I'm good. But it always showed up when something was required of me mm -hmm. that I didn't want to do. And so I would do it because 
I didn't want the consequences of not doing it. But on the inside, I wasn't doing it. That's the difference with me. I rebelled on the outside. I didn't care. Bring it on. You're going to beat me? Beat me. But I'm not doing it. That was me. And then you were the type that... I wasn't going to take the beating. You were bad on the inside. I, I would do it. I would do it. But I would be... That's where the anger, a lot of anger. And you know, people don't think of anger necessarily being a sin. But anger is a sin. It's very, and we accept it as common. But it's just an expression of rebellion. And yet we think it's okay. That's interesting. I'd like us to take up some more on that. Anger as rebellion. Anger is one of those um, emotions that most people express in some capacity. And it calls me to think about the scripture in Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. Because most people do not associate their anger with that being an, a, a door, mm -hmm. an open door of mm -hmm. the enemy. Ephesians 4, 26, 27 says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. So the inference there is, if we indeed put our head on the pillow at night, and there is anger in our heart towards anyone, then the scripture is telling us we are giving place to the devil. Mm -hmm. That place becomes the door that he's using to come in and have anger control us. And anytime anything controls us, that's sin. And that's rebellion against God because he has made a way for us to be free of these type things. So the anger, is issue is one that most of us accept as well everybody gets angry and that's true but the scripture says that we can be angry and not sin and that's the issue is don't allow the anger to remain do not allow anger to have its abiding place in our soul and especially do not let the sun go down on that anger because if we go to sleep at night and there's anger in our soul that anger it stays there and then that's when we have some, that's where the anger issues can develop. And, and I think, I, I know Edna has something to share about passive aggressive anger, but there are some things about anger that a lot of people don't realize could become a sin. The act, frustration is part of anger and um, feuding with somebody is part of anger and we, we, we feel that it's okay, you upset me and um, I, I have a right to be angry but if we don't get rid of that, as I said before, the sun goes down then it becomes sin mm -hmm. and there are so many other things um, we, we feel resentful towards somebody, it's a part of anger but nobody's putting those together and say that's anger, it, they differentiate it because they feel like anger is you have to, in Jamaica, we say curse off somebody, you know, and really get boisterous, and that is only the only time we're angry. But there are different Expression. expressions of anger that that we have that we're not considering it as true. anger. So it's true. Tell us about the, the passivity in anger. Well, a very common expression of uh, anger passively is <clears throat> to wait when you've been asked to do something. Wait until the moment that someone is about to respond mm. and do something about it. So you push it just to push their button a little bit. And um, another is to do it, but not do it well. Mm. Um, almost well. Mm but I'll do it just good enough to not get in trouble or to pacify someone. So those are ways, some of the ways that it's expressed. But I'd also like to say something about the sun going down on your wrath. <laughs> because sometimes um, we think because we have stopped arguing or there is rest mm. that the anger is gone, it's taken care of. But when we allow the anger to go down on our wrath, which has been pushed down and quieted, but not dealt with, such as repentance, uh, apologizing, 
forgiving each other. Mm -hmm. That's how the anger is released in a healthy way. But when we simply push it down so that we can save it for another day, then what we're saving is layer upon layer upon layer of anger. And it comes out when least expected. Oh, what about when we bring it up back six months time? <laughs> <laughs> what about that? We all are guilty of that. When it, we bring up stuff. It often comes out um, suddenly and explosively. Mm -hmm. And often in very inconvenient places. There may be a lot of people around. Uh, it's a surprise to people around us. So that's what happens when we suppress the anger. Instead of releasing it, each time we get angry, we can release it through a repentant heart, uh, through apologies and forgiveness. It can be released, and six months later, it's a fresh anger. It's not anger piled upon layers of anger. So what would we say to a listener right now who deals with anger, deals with resentment, deals with um, frustration? You know, you could be on the job and you're just frustrated with your boss, and you don't even realize anger is being piled up inside of you. What would you say to a listener, a viewer? What, what could they do? Well, I think it's important to realize if there's been an open door to something like anger, and we've allowed that to be a part of our lives, the same door that we open, we can close. And of course, that's, that's what your question is asking. So the, the key is, first of all, simply to acknowledge that my anger is sin against God. Mm -hmm. and, and not just that, but it's not the best, because anger gets emotions so charged, and there's, it can create torment, it creates restlessness, it creates sleeplessness. I mean, anyone who continually entertains anger is not going to be a peaceful person. Mm -hmm. and, and Christ has paid the price for us to live in peace, especially with ourselves and with others, especially within the family, within a, with a wife, with the children, with co-workers, it, it, with church members. We can live in peace with one another, but we have to address the issue of anger and recognize those resentments, those um, those um, feudings, the bickering. You know, it's just an indicator that there is anger inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so to acknowledge it, go before the Lord and ask for forgiveness. I love the scripture, 1 John 1, 9, which mm. says if we are faith, if we or if we ask the Lord for forgiveness, he is faithful to forgive. He never says, no, I'm not going to forgive you. It's just way too big of a problem. I'm not going to go there. No, that's not the God we serve. He grants us forgiveness and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And that's a key. When we ask for forgiveness, we get cleansed and we ask for forgiveness for our anger. If we just had a spat with our wife, or we just went off on the kids, whatever that looks like, we can go to the Lord and receive forgiveness. And then, you know what, that really makes it easier to go to the ones that you've hurt yes. and ask them to forgive you. I mean, that's when you really know God's doing a work in someone's life, is when they can go to somebody else and ask for forgiveness for how they had related to them, the anger, um, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. And then there are times, Edna, that people are angry with themselves. For some mistake that they've made, they have regrets, and, 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 and you know, they feel guilty about something, and along with anger, there's also shame. But I, I, I think people don't understand that when they're angry with themselves too, they need to forgive themselves. So, what would you say to the viewer? Release the mm -hmm. anger, release yourself from your own anger. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard for many people to realize that that is something necessary to do. We hold ourselves to a higher standard, believing that everyone else holds us to that standard. Mm. And uh, when we can release ourselves, we can walk in freedom uh, 
And the self-accusation, we need to recognize that uh, the accuser of the brethren uh, will accuse us of ourselves. So self-accusation becomes uh, a difficult yes. issue. And that's one of the things that keeps us sleepless at night. Mm -hmm. But release ourselves and recognize that if God will forgive us, and He does, then there is no reason why we should not release ourselves from whatever we're holding ourselves accountable to. I'd like us to pray with someone. They may be listening and they just were saying, well, tell me what next to do. Could we pray with them? Absolutely. Absolutely. Would you need someone who's watching? Well, for those of you who are watching this and uh, realize that the subject we've been talking about in the area of anger is, is very pertinent to your life, um, we just would like to pray. You know, going to the Lord is not a hard thing. So if uh, we may lead you in that, that would be a real privilege on our part to be able to do that. So Father, we just come to your presence in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we come on behalf of those that are watching this video and are realizing that the anger in their life, oh God, is causing them torment. It's causing them misery. It's causing them sleeplessness. And Lord, we're asking for our grace to be released to them right now to simply come to you and ask for your forgiveness. We're asking, O oh God, that as they receive from you, that they are keenly aware, Lord God, that any unrighteous behavior, any unrighteous emotions in their life are as well are being forgiven because your word says that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness when we simply humble ourselves and ask you to forgive us. So Lord, we ask you to release a grace right now, a divine enablement. Holy Spirit, we look to you to quicken to those that are watching. Let them humble themselves before you and let them ask for forgiveness. And Lord, those who feel guilty because they feel like they should know better, we just ask that there is a release of that because in most cases, all of us should know better. And so we just speak freedom and release from that, release from the guilt and the self-accusation. I hope you enjoyed watching Real Talk with Diane. We touched on some topics that I know hit everyone right there where it hurts. Every one of us has Dealt with anger. If you say you have never dealt with anger, well, I'd love to hear from you. However, if you have been touched today, I pray that you will contact Edna or Sandra or myself. You'll see our website um, below. And you just make contact with us. We want to help you if we could, one-on-one. -on -one. And if not, I hope the prayers did help. And I hope you got in touch with what the Lord will require of you to just get rid of the anger. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Thank you for watching.